Real estate investment practice problem using Excel. Price level adjusted mortgage or PLAM, P-L-A-M, part number one. Get ready because we're raising the stakes with real estate. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we have three tabs down below, example, practice, and blank. Let's take a look at them now, starting with the example tab, in essence being an answer key. We're going to com be comparing our new type of loan, the PLAM type of loan, with the standard 30-year fixed loan interest rate, in our case 10%, calculating the payment based on that at, in our case, the 87757 looking at the amortization table having nice even payments all the way through interest always being calculated at the same rate and then it being fully amortized at the end of the loan the loan going down to zero at the end of 30 360 payments or 30 years contrasting that with a plam loan and this loan also a little bit less common these days than the adjustable rate loan, but does have its pros and cons. You might come across it, so it could be useful to understand it. It might be a good option in certain circumstances. So we have the $100,000 loan, 30-year loan, 360 payments. The initial rate we're going to say is the 4%. And then, unlike the adjustable rate loan, we're not going to be adjusting the rate periodically We'll be adjusting basically the loan balance periodically. How will we be adjusting the loan balance based on the inflation? So we're going to, in our example, say that we're going to readjust on a year-by-year -year basis. A year goes by based on one payment calculation. We then look at what the inflation rate is. And note, when we think about the inflation rate, that's going to be some kind, we're going to have to use some kind of calculation or index in order to figure out what the inflation rate is. And then we're going to adjust the ending balance for that inflation, adjust it typically upwards for inflation, recalculate the payment amount based on the new loan balance, and then keep going forward. Therefore, the rate will always be the same, but we're going to have these periodic adjustments for the increase due to the inflation. Like with the adjustable rates, this is going to be putting more of the risk on the borrower rather than the lender which may result in the lender being able to give more favorable terms since they have less of the risk and more of it is on the borrower so that's your kind of trade-off as we go so also note that that means that we as the borrower we don't know what's going to happen in the future with regards to our payments because the in inflation is going to be dependent on the economy what happens in the economy so we don't know how much inflation is going to go up by. So when we start off the loan, we have the same kind of risk factor scenarios that we can try to take into consideration, like best case scenario, worst case scenario. What do we think like the average scenario is going to be? What would happen if I sold the property sooner or so on and so forth? We're going to assume a 6% increase over the whole 30 year time period in our example here to get an idea. But as time passes in actuality, then, of course, the inflation rate might differ from year to year. It might go up, down from year to year. We don't really know. It could vary from year to year. We're going to use this for basically our example to go through. And what you might do oftentimes just kind of assumes a static basic inflation rate when you're trying to figure out or make projections while you're thinking about taking out the loan in beforehand. All right. So then we're going to put together our table which will be the payment calculation. We'll then calculate the ending balance as if we didn't have any inflation adjustment. Then we'll calculate the inflation adjustment, which will result in the payment calculation for the next period being adjusted there. So that's going to be our calculation. We can do a nice 30-year table with those types of calculations, getting the payment and the ending balance. Then we'll use that to construct our amortization table giving us a better idea of what's actually going on here and then we'll use that to do our irr calculations we'll do some nice little graphs over here and add the pivot table so it's going to be great it's going to take a couple presentations here if we go to the practice tab this has some blue areas that have some pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem without doing as much formatting go into the third tab the blank tab this is where we're going to make this thing from scratch so here we have the amortization table on the left. We'll use that when we get to the amortization process on the right to compare and contrast. But for now, we're going to be constructing our table, figuring out our payments on a year-by-year -year basis. So let's do that. Let's put our headers up top. It's going to be year, 
payment. We're going to say balance before ADJ and then balance after ADJ. I'm going to select our headers up top. Let's make that let's make that black and white font group black and white as as has been our custom. We're going to go to the alignment, wrap the text and center it. So there we have it. Years, we're going to say years are from 0 1 2. We're going to bring it on down to 30 years, putting our cursor on the fill handle, grabbing fills handle, making sure we got a tight grip, chalked up our hands so we don't slip. And then we drag that thing down to 30 years. Let go of the fill handle. Go back on up top, alignment and center. So then we're going to start off with our payment at period zero, which is going to be zero. I mean, oh, zero is going to be 100,000. It's going to be the 100,000, the L4. And then we'll calculate our payment calculation, standard payment calculation process here. Simply going to be equal to, I'm going to say negative, PMT shift nine. The rate is going to be our starting rate at that 4%. We could copy that down because it's going to be the same. The rate isn't going to change. I could say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the L and 7. We're going to divide that by 12 to get the monthly rate. We're going to say comma. The number of periods is going to be the, the 30 uh, times 12 or the 360. So we could say the 360. But let's try to do it with a, a formula here. So I'm going to think about the years first. Brackets. It's going to be the 30 that I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard because that's outside of my table minus this one right there plus one brackets. Why would I do that? Minus one plus one is still 30 because when we copy it down, it's going to be 30 minus two plus one, which will be 29 and picking up the proper payment at that point. That's for the years. We're going to multiply it times 12 to get to the months then. And then we'll say comma. And the present value will be the loan balance, which will be the prior balance we had up here and enter. We'll do that a few more times. If that was a little quick, we'll do it a few more times as we go. There's our payment. Let's select this whole thing and add a couple decimals to it. So we're at 477.42. And then we now we want our ending balance. So at the end of the of the time period, what will our ending balance be? We can get this by looking at the amortization table or we can get it by basically doing our ending balance calculation. Then we'll adjust that ending balance calculation, assuming a 6% increase in inflation. So ending balance calculation, we're going to say equals future value, shift 9. We're going to be taking the rate. The rate is going to be that 4%. If I want to copy it down, I select F4 on the keyboard, divided by 12 to get the monthly rate, comma, the number of periods, let's do the same kind of thought process. We're going to say brackets. Actually, the number of periods is just going to be 12 periods because we're going to take the future value from the last point we were at, which is going to be 12 months. And then comma, the payment is going to be the amount on the left-hand side that we just calculated. And then comma, the present value needs to be negative, And it's going to be the prior balance that we had, which is right there in Q2 for us and then enter so we got the 98 to 39 so that would be the ending balance at the end of the first year if we had no adjustment for inflation then if we assume that there's inflation of the six percent we're going to apply that six percent inflation to the 98 to 39 increasing it by six percent so we could say to get to increasing it by six percent we can multiply times 100 plus 6% or 106%. So we could take then this cell times brackets 1 plus 6% uh, or 106%, increasing it by 6% to 104, uh, 133. So that's going to be our ending balance. So you see what we did here. We basically said, I'm going to adjust it periodically. I'm not going to adjust the rate. We're going to figure out what inflation is. And we'll apply that out on a year-by-year -year basis to the balance of the loan, keeping the rate the same. But now the payment's going to change because the payment will now be based on the adjusted rate. I'm sorry, not the adjusted rate, the adjusted balance. Same rate, the adjusted balance. So now we can do the payment calculation again. We could copy it down. If I copy down this payment calculation, if I just copied it all the way down, it would start to populate. We got that stagger kind of thing going on here where if I was to copy these, these items down, 
it would start to populate once we get the once we get the ending balances basically in place but we want to do the calculation a few different times here so let's practice that note that this isn't quite calculated properly because this one right here that l8 needs to be absolute and then if i copied this down if i copied this down then it should work right there so that looks more appropriate to what it should b so and 11 let me just check yeah that looks about right but we want to do it a few times each time we do it we want to think about how we would basically copy it down so we'll do the payment again negative pmt i won't do it 30 times but we'll do it a few more times the payment calculation bracket the rate is going to be once again that four percent it's outside the table so i'm going to say f4 on the keyboard to make it absolute divide it by 12 and then comma the number of periods i'm going to think about years first brackets which will be the 30 years that 30 is outside of our data set therefore i'm going to make it absolute f4 on the keyboard minus then the two on the left hand side that one i do want to copy down plus one so basically 30 minus two plus one or 29 brackets multiplying that times 12 to go from month to from years to months comma the present value is the prior balance, the prior adjusted balance, and then enter. It'll close up the brackets for us. The ending balance then, we're gonna say is gonna be equal to the future value, shift nine, the rate 4%. We're gonna select F4 on the keyboard, making that absolute because it's outside of our table, divided by 12, comma, number of periods is going to be then, let's say brackets, we're gonna say then, no we don't need brackets this is just going to be 12 because it, we're starting from the prior point going up by these 12 payments so 12 months and then comma the payment is going to be the amount to the left which is that 50606 and then comma the prior balance is simply going to be the prior balance that we had up top that's in q3 and enter and something went wrong because that prior balance needs to be negative in Q3, needs to be negative. So there we have it, that looks good. And then we're gonna increase it by 6% again. So now we're at the ending balance before the adjustment, now we'll do the adjustment. And we'll verify these numbers basically with the amortization table as we go in a, in a future presentation. So this is gonna be the prior balance times, I'm gonna say brackets, one plus the 6%, f4 on the keyboard and then close up the brackets and enter so there we have that let's do it a couple more times and then we'll copy it down payment new payment negative pmt shift nine rate is going to be the four percent f4 on the keyboard dot divided by 12 comma number of periods brackets which would be 30 that's outside so f4 on the keyboard absolute reference minus the three plus one which will give us 28 years brackets multiplied times 12 to get to the months 12 months comma prior present value is the prior balance for the adjusted balance there it is and enter it's going to close it up for us there we go the 536 then the ending balance at the end of year three would be calculated we're just going to go 12 periods up from the prior balance here at the payment rate of the 536 so that's going to be equal to equals the future value shift nine the rate is going to be then the four percent f4 on the keyboard divided by 12 for the monthly rate and so we can copy it down comma number of periods is just 12 12 months from the prior balance comma the payment's going to be the amount on the left hand side and then comma negative for the present value from the prior loan balance and that should give us our balance at the end if we weren't to be considering the adjustment for the inflation then we're going to say okay the same inflation amount remember that inflation amount will not be constant in real life it'll be whatever the inflation was and note that inflation in the u.s is usually they shoot for like like uh, one to three percent but it could easily go out of out of control at certain points in the in the economy if you're at a period of high inflation then that usually lasts a while and you, you start to feel like that's just the norm <laughs> and then if it's in a period of low inflation you start to feel like that's the norm and nothing will ever change so you know just you, whatever the inflation is it will change from from year to year but we're going to use that as our estimate 
So we're going to say this is the last amount times. We're going to say 1 plus the 6%. F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. And there we have it. So we're at the 112549. Let's do a couple more times here. Negative PMT. Shift 9 is now the new, the rate is still at the 4% because that's the same all the way through. F4 on the keyboard divided by 12, comma. Number of periods is going to be brackets. Years first will be 30. That's outside the table. Therefore, absolute reference F4 on the keyboard minus the four and then plus one closing it up there's our years times 12 to get to the months comma present value is then going to be the prior balance up top and enter closing up the brackets enter there we have it now let's calculate the ending balance before the adjustment for inflation which is going to be 12 months out from the prior balance we had here at that payment level so we're going to say equals future value, shift 9, rate 12%, F4 on the keyboard, divided by 12, comma, number of periods is just 12 months, comma, the payment is the amount on the left, and then comma, present value needs to be negative of the prior balance, and enter. So there we have, now that's our ending balance before the adjustment for inflation. We're assuming the same 6% all the way through. So we're going to say this equals the prior balance, then times brackets the 6% plus 1. I did it the other way. 1 plus 6%, 6 plus 1, same thing. So we're going to say enter. There's the 116. Let's do it two more times, and then we'll copy it down. Negative PMT shift 9 rate. 4% F4 keyboard divided by 12 comma number of periods years first brackets 30 outside the tables therefore F4 keyboard dollar sign before L and 5 minus the 5 on the left plus 1 there's the years closing it up but we need months therefore times 12 to get to the months comma the present value is going to be the prior balance up top in Q6 let's close it up this time so it doesn't Give us that little dingy message. There we have it. So now we'll calculate our new ending balance before the 6% inflation adjustment based on the new payment. So we're going to say this is going to be equal the future value. Brackets. The rate is going to be the 4% F4 keyboard divided by 12, comma. Number of periods is just 12 months out from the last time we were looking at, comma. Payments right to the left, 602.73. Comma, present value needs to be negative of the prior balance. There we have it. Enter. So that looks good. And then we're just going to add 6% to it, assuming, because this is our estimation, that the inflation is at the 6%. So that's going to be the, that balance times 106% or 1 plus the 6%. F4 keyboard, shift 0, enter one more time. And then we're going to copy it down. Enjoy it because this is the last one. So make sure you get everything out of it here. So we're going to say negative PMT, shift nine, the rate's going to be the 4% F4 on the keyboard divided by 12, comma, number of periods and years first, brackets, going over to the 30, F4 on the keyboard, because that's outside of our table, minus the six, plus one close up the brackets that's in years so we're going to multiply it times 12 to get to the months comma present value is going to be the last balance up top and close up the brackets shift zero and enter there it is again now where will we be at the end of the year before the inflation adjustment uh, at the new payment amount well let's do the equals future value fv shift nine rate four percent f4 on the keyboard making it absolute divided by 12 comma number of periods is just 12 this time 12 months half passed since the last time period comma payment right to the left of it comma present value needs to be negative of the thing above it right there there we have it the prior balance and there we have it Notice Excel did this one for me right there, which is nice, but I want to do it one more time. I want to do it this time, Excel. Don't don't do my work for me when I'm this is so here we're gonna we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the prior balance brackets one plus the six or one hundred and six percent. Let's make that L F4 on the keyboard because we want to copy it down. 
Oh, now I messed it up. I should have just let Excel do it. Go to multiply. Let's do it one more time. I can't end on that note. That was horrible. Equals the prior one times brackets one plus the 6% F4 on the keyboard, closing up the brackets. There we go. Beautifully executed for the final process. Then we can select these and we can just double click on the fill handle and it should copy it on down. It should give us that point of security, it being zero at the end of the 30 years. So we don't, it's not like that, that last one, that weird one where you had like the payment cap and then you had negative amortization and then it didn't, it didn't, wasn't nicely amortized. This one still <clears throat> amortizes at the end, giving us that feeling of assurance, kind of like the accountants, like with that balance, the things in balance and you're like, ah, it's bad. The loan has become zero at the end of the time frame. The way that's the way the world should be. And it gives you that warm, cozy feeling inside. So in any case, now after that, we're going to do the same thing and kind of apply this out to the full amortization table, looking at the 360 payments and see how that kind of table would look, be constructed. Then we'll go to our pivot tables. We'll look at our IRR calculations and all that good stuff.